In this video you learn how to load an audio file with the built-in WAV module. You learn the structure of the WAV format, take its raw audio data and visualize it in a window. One of the amazing things of audio is that a loudspeaker can recreate all sounds recorded just by moving back and forward. The speaker membrane is moved by a signal like this. Increase the amplitude and the speaker membrane also moves further. Increase the frequency and the membrane moves faster. By creating complex signals, all sorts of sounds can be played. The recreation of sound can be done analog or digital. But in digital music there are many formats and in this video you will see one of the best known formats. The WAV format. Famous for being used by CD players. But even WAV files come in different formats. And in this project you will work with 16 bits, 44.1 kHz. Let me show it to you. This is what it looks and sounds like. Notice the file has two channels. A left channel and a right channel. The first task is to open this file and extract some information from it. The WAV file is copied to the project and I created a main script. I import WAV and open the WAV file. I expect the WAV file to have two channels and I can test this. I execute the code. Yep, that's correct. I also print the sample width and frequency. The frequency is called frame rate in the wave module. And that works as well. Notice that the sample width has a value of 2 bytes, which is 16 bits. The wave object recognized this audio file as a two channel 16 bit 44.1 kHz wave file. You already know why there are two channels. For stereo, you need a left and a right channel. So, what is the sample width? Look at this WAV file. I want to measure its value at this point. For this, I have to define the range of the amplitude. For example, I could store the value in a byte. This allows a range from minus 127 to plus 127. But most humans are capable of hearing that an 8 bits file is not as good as analog audio. So for CD it was decided to use 16 bits audio, which gives us the following range. Finally, there is the frequency. The frequency determines how many times per second a sample is measured. This audio has a frequency of 44,100 samples per second. So how many samples are stored in this WAV file? Samples are called frames in the WAV module. I print the number of frames. One hundred sixty-one thousand two hundred and eighty samples are stored in the audio file. If I divide this number by the frequency, I should get an audio length of about three and a half seconds. Yep, that looks about right. At this point, all the information about the structure of this WAV file is known. The only thing that is missing is the audio data itself. The audio data can be retrieved with the readFrames method. The method needs the total amount of samples to read and I will pass the total number of samples. But now comes the difficult part of parsing the audio data. Do you remember what is stored in a single sample? Well, a sample is made of 16 bits, which are 2 bytes. But the audio file contains 2 channels, so each sample is made of 2 channels times 2 bytes equals 4 bytes of data. For audio with length 3.6 seconds, 161,000 280 samples of 4 bytes are stored. 
That means if I print the length of the actual audio data, it should be 645,120 bytes. And there it is. This WAV file has structural information and a stream of 645,120 bytes of audio data. The question is, how is the data encoded? Here are the first four bytes. The first two bytes make up the value for the first sample of the left channel. And byte 3 and 4 make up the value of the first sample of the right channel. I will focus on the first two bytes. How are these two bytes converted to a value from minus 32,768 to plus 32,768? Actually, this is not a trivial task. One of the bytes needs to be multiplied by 256 and one of the bytes also stores the sign. Lucky for me, there is a class in Python that does exactly what I need. I'm talking about class array in module array and I'll put a link to it in the description. Let me convert each group of two bytes to 16-bit integers. The length of this list should be half the length of the samples list. I import array and execute the code. That is correct. Let me show you the type of list elements. And that is a type I can work with. If I would print the array, it would contain something like this. The values alternate between the left and right channel. Each value is in this range. But I want the values to be between minus 1 and plus 1. So I normalize the values. The values are now between minus 1 and plus 1. And there's one more thing I will do before passing them to the draw function. The wave drawer draws two waves, one for each channel, so I will group the values in batches of two. I print the list of batched samples. I import iter tools and execute the code. Very nice. Let me get rid of these print statements. Everything is prepared and now I can start with the fun part. Visualize the data. I create module Canvas. With class Canvas that subclasses a piglet window. The class initializer will take the list of samples and call Dunder in it from Super. I set the background color and window dimensions. The color values are a list of R, G, B and alpha values between 0 and 1. To apply the background color, I implement the draw function. I import window and clear color. I create the canvas in main and pass the batched samples. And run the app. For this I import canvas and the piglet run function. Now let's see if that works. There is the window. And that works! Now I will iterate the samples and draw lines between their values. I create a batch for the lines I am going to draw. I import batch. A batch object allows the graphics card to optimize drawing elements. 
and I am going to optimize further. I am not going to draw all samples, but only every one in 40. That should be enough. I calculate the width of each sample on the screen by dividing the width of the window by the number of samples. The first sample will start at x0. And since the signal is stereo, I calculate two y positions. I create a list of lines and loop through the samples. Before I calculate the correct amplitudes, I want to make sure everything works until now. I add lines for both channels with a fixed height. I import line. I update the X position. I draw the batch and execute the program. And that works. Now I calculate the correct line endpoint Y values from the signal. I replace the fixed values. And I set the starting Y values for the next lines to the end position of the current lines. That should do the trick. And that is how it should be. I'll compare the wave to the one I showed before. I'd say that is correct. Nothing is stopping you from here to actually play the sound and add some animations to the wave. The possibilities with Piglet are endless and if you want to see more of them, click on this video right now. There you learn how to create an animated solar system with Python and Piglet.